Whoa, whoa. WrestleMania. Fighting to survive. Pump it up, pump it up, everybody. Whoa, whoa. <sighs> WrestleMania. Fighting to survive. Pump it up, pump it up. <laughs> it's the hardest part of the ring. What's going on, Bob? Squad WrestleMania month is over. And then we have Raw tonight and NXT tomorrow night because it's, oh my God, it never ends. Why won't they just let me sleep? Why? They don't want me to live anymore. They're trying to end my life. They're, they're a one trick pony beating a dead horse. Saving trees, hugging whales, kissing hands, shaking babies, third time's the charm, three's company, 24-7, 365, all the way live, baby doll, living on the edge of a lightning bolt, making your body shake, your back crack, and your liver quiver with a hole in your heart and a pain in your pancreas, it is WrestleMania, night two, the hardest part of the ring, thank you once again for joining me, oh my goodness, I feel like shit's second cousin right now, my God almighty, sweet mother of pearl, heavens to Murgatroyd, every which way from Sunday, heavens to Betsy. Okay, um, I don't, I didn't take notes again. I'm going to try to remember the seven matches roughly in order. <laughs> and it's probably for the better that I skip over all the little things I hate. Uh, once again, no pre-show matches. I think this was for the better. Just don't tire everyone out. Um... It wasn't too long. It was the match, at the show itself was like three hours and 15, three hours, 20 minutes, something like that. And I like, uh, I think that's good for a WrestleMania. I like, uh, I think they should go a little, little over three. I like a good, somewhere in the three and a half range, give or take 10, 15 minutes. I'm fine with that. Let's, uh, you know, aim for that. Provided, uh, as far as in ring action goes with the interrupt. Wow, again, the overproduction. I, I didn't think between WrestleMania night one and two that the production would uh, cease to be uh, oversaturated. Like, my God almighty. That's why it takes so long. They made us wait so long. Because there was no match that was like a crazy 20-something minute, near half an hour back and forth crazy battle. And we still had seven matches going three hours and 15 minutes. So where does all that time go? Oh, the crazy-ass entrances. How many people, like, back in my day, <laughs> most of those earlier WrestleManias, not in eight, I think the first seven at least, there's, they start, they do an anthem, a song of some sort, we do America the Beautiful to alienate our international fans, good call, that worked out well in 93 when Brett was the only guy not roided up, anyway, trying folks i'm trying bob squad to get through the thing what was my original point i don't think it was important you'd have wrestlemania 7 haku and barbarian are in the ring wrestlemania 5 haku is in the ring it's just, it's just put haku in the ring i guess but we're uh, right after the anthem uh wrestlemania 6 um was it Marteller? I think Martell and Coco both had entrances. Okay, I'm wrong on WrestleMania 6. WrestleMania 4 I haven't seen in a long time. I'm willing to bet that most of the guys for that Battle Royal were just standing in the ring when he started WrestleMania 4. WrestleMania 3, Don, The Rock, Morocco. Man, it's weird when you hear Gorilla and Jesse say The Rock in the 80s and Cowboy Bob Orton are already hanging out in the ring. Was Jimmy Hart managing them? I think he was. I could be wrong on that, but I want to say WrestleMania 2 I really don't know. Did Steamboat beat Hercules up top in Mania 2? And I think Tito Santana beat the Executioner in the opener of the first WrestleMania, which they didn't even name WrestleMania 1. It's like it's like the World War. is like, we're not counting on more of this. But Until later in 95, WCW would name a pay-per-view after the World Wars. They would name a World War 3 with all the confidence in the world that there won't actually be one. And then they can sue the war for copyright. Brilliant. That's the most clever. That's the most clever thing I'm going to say in the whole podcast. So, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, what happens? The pre-show. Hey, I'm gonna. Sometimes I'm. Uh, I'm gonna go with the woke people. Sometimes I'm not gonna go again. I'm gonna go with the woke people on this one. Could we interrupt the one woman on the show any further? Holy balls, Booker. I know Booker and JBL and they're good old boys and this and the other thing. 
But Kayla is holding this damn thing together. They're giving her way too many idiots to juggle at the same time. You got this Peter Rosenberg buffoon who uh, <laughs> who literally was in criti critiquing something and said, well, the internet nerds think this like he's not one. And thankfully, JBL, sometimes you need a good bully. <laughs> thankfully, JBL was right there to call him on that. Um, and in the same breath, the Peter Rosenberg guy calls uh, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryanson, which is totally confusing now. And it, I mean, anyone can slip up, but whatever. So I just want to make that note. Like, Kayla's doing a very good job. She's not Renee. We all love Renee. Renee's the greatest. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Kayla's doing really, really well. And she, the buff and Lawler, too. The buffoonery she has to juggle. And then they just keep throwing more people in there. Let's have Sonya walk in. Let's have a... Uh, now let's see out of the fans. And she can't cut to a break or start a sh or, or cut to WrestleMania itself without JBL chiming in some one, two word thing in the back. Like, geez, let her, let her do her job. She's good at it. She's wrangling you idiots. So you can sell whatever you're selling. We start the show. Somebody else sings, uh, America, the beautiful, I forget who. I don't know. It was a celebrity. I didn't know. I'm not hip with the kids. I'm not hip with the kids. The kids, they like their hula hoops and their moon pies. They give them a nickel. They go see the movie picture. Maybe they have a root beer float. They'll take Dad's Corvette or their roller skate to make out mountain. You don't know about the kids. I know what I'm hip with the kids, man. I know what the kids like. Jumping motorcycles over cars and Arnold's Chicken Shack all the time. I know what kids do. I'm, I'm hip with the kids, man. They'll, they'll ask their older, uh, also adopted brother what they're talking about several times. Because the world don't move to the media just... <sighs> enough, enough. WrestleMania. Oh, they show that god damn pirate unfunny thing again, which is pretty much a knockoff of what they did last year. And WWE doesn't understand that comedy is not like music. Like people want to hear a song they love and sing along with it. Catchphrases in wrestling are more like music than they are comedy. People want to repeat it. You go to see your favorite comedian, and they do all the favorite jokes you know. You're gonna like it for a few seconds, but then quickly go but i wanted new of this laughter the experience doesn't work the same and they don't get that so we're gonna shoehorn i'm a little biased but we're gonna shoehorn the goddamn hurricane in your face for a brief second what was i think it was in a commercial the old spice commercial the unfunny average joseph whatever it is thing poor rick bugenhagen he's so jacked let's put clothes on him good idea um I think the character won the title and lost it in a commercial. I don't know anymore. Uh, let's let's move on. We opened a show. To my surprise, we opened the show with Fiend versus Randy Orton. Uh, I'm surprised that it wasn't Riasca. I'm also surprised that this was like a match match, and that was amazing to me. Fiend comes out of a Jack in a Box. Alexa Bliss has wacky makeup, and that was very cool. And it was nice. I think people were. Relieved to see just the fiend fiend and not the burned up fiend. Because he can't wrestle with all that crap on his head anyway. It's going to fall off and then everyone's going to laugh. So, you, you know. Um, so, well, you know, fiend did his moves and a nice tribute to Luke Harper or Brody Lee, which, which which is great. And people dug it. I mean, fiend was the baby face here. He, you know, he did the tribute to the, the fallen guy. And um, he was making a comeback, even though he was the one torturing Randy with black goop and voiceovers and... and so it's a very convoluted feud, but what makes Fiend the heel more, well, pardon me, what makes the Fiend to Bray Wyatt the face more than anything else is uh, now he's sympathetic because Alexa turned on him. Why did she turn on him? We, uh, the, the Fiend who was indestructible and popping up from this, popping up with that, does get pinned by one RKO, but he gets up fairly quickly so you can argue the move stuns him enough for the three count i'm not too worried about that and for all the fiend people who but, but he was indestructible and then over oh, randy orton's finish takes like it's fine that's not the issue here the issue here is wrestlemania is a blow-off event and we started a new issue we didn't really resolve anything orton doesn't win or lose the issue he just kind of slips out the back door because I would imagine this is the end of Orton's involvement with this, uh, probably to his relief somewhat. But 
I don't know. Actually, again, he's making a shitload of money to take very few bumps this whole time. So maybe I don't know the answer to that. But uh, so now Fiend has to get revenge on Alexa. Alexa. So is Alexa going to find some wrestler? Is Alexa going to wrestle the Fiend just like she wrestled Randy Orton? I don't know. But we should. I don't think at WrestleMania is the time to start asking questions. I think your your Rumbles, your TLCs, you know, even um, Rumbles, you want to start asking questions because you're getting ready already for WrestleMania. But usually it's your other wacky pay per views, your TLC, Fast Lane, Battleground, No Mercy, Night of Champions, kind of those those things, even your Money in the Bank kind of things. Your uh, Backlash. You that, that's when you want to. Oh man. I need to see what the hell happens, because uh, the raw after um, the raw after Mania is traditionally a huge raw anyway, where we start new big. Uh, it's almost like the, the it's almost like New Year's Day for wrestling for WWE anyway, because it's like oh how do we start this? What's going to happen? We're gonna we're gonna hear from the new champions and who's gonna interrupt them and show us who, who someone one or two or three people usually make some kind of huge return or something like that and I mean, sometimes they'll have a crazy rematch like the night after but it'll be a, a strange finish you know who knows and it's just fun for the fans remember them oh, I'm twelve I'm eleven minutes in and I'm almost twelve minutes in I've talked about one match okay let's uh. Moving along here, the second match, um, once again, is the tag team, the women's tag team match. Team Nia defeats Natalia and Tamina. Again, they do the, I don't know if they did the heart attack to Nia or Shayna. They did do um, a superfly splash Tamina hit. Tamina got two Tamina chants, which I've never heard before. They were just really, it is really weird when they reference Snooka, but like, they're not supposed to. It's kind of a weird thing. But then again, you are you're putting the announcers in a hell of a spot because they have to tiptoe around. Hey, these two women have a legacy, and their fathers. Well, we can't mention who one of their fathers is. It's kind of odd. Maybe just don't go there then to begin with. I don't know. Anyway, like always, this is Team Nia Jax. Um, you can audibly, loudly hear Nia yell, "Lay it in!" as Tamina's headbutting her early on, like two minutes into the match, uh, and. I don't know. I'm just just wasn't a fan. Nia is like pretty much immobile. Um, poor Tamina. The, the announcer said Tamina looks great. I think she does. Tamina does does look great, but she she looks the same as she did like ten to she and she, Tamina doesn't age. She's looked like that exactly the entire time. I think I, I, the way she's moving around. She I mean she looks like she's hurt. And I think she's had a ton of injuries. She's usually had a knee brace on of some sort most of the time we've known her. She doesn't look like she's moving too good. Natalia was terrific. Shayna was terrific. Again, I Natalia and Shayna, I'd watch that match. Well, I guess I'd watch this match, too. I did. <laughs> but Natalia and Shayna, there's a match. I'd like to see that. A competitive one. I think they had like a 30-second th like one on SmackDown. I didn't see. I don't watch SmackDown. Okay, so we have two matches in a row. We're going in, anyway. You have heel versus heel and two heel victories, obviously. And this is a theme for the match tonight, okay? Um, I think the next match was the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn thing with Logan Paul and, uh, Owens and Zayn have a, a competitive out back and forth and beat each other up pretty good. There was some good stuff in there. Owens wins the thing and thankfully gives the stunner to the Logan Paul YouTube guy, which everyone wanted to see. There was no way the audience wasn't letting Logan Paul get out of there without the stunner because a wrestling audience isn't going to like a YouTube star. Yeah. Who cares? No one likes a YouTube star unless you specifically subscribe to that channel. Everyone hates YouTube stars because we know they they kind of earned it. They kind of didn't. They were shrewd, and you got to applaud them for that. But at the same time, eh, you don't really count. <laughs> uh, and this is one of the things I do miss where the, the fans, are, they're just stuff they're not going to let you get away with. Because if, if, this, if this was a Thunderdome WrestleMania... Logan Paul and Kevin Owens would hug and be best friends, and then there'd be piped in cheers for Logan Paul, and everyone would just piss off, and we'd be we'd be angry or 
Kevin Owens is the only good guy to win out of these seven matches. I believe the next match was uh, Riddle and Sheamus for the U.S. Championship. Sheamus defeats him. I liked this match. And again, I was worried because, I mean, I, we've seen him wrestle 18 times in the last couple of months. And they beat the shit out of each other like they like to do. Bro kick uh, out of a moonsault. Caught Riddle right on the lip. Uh, a little bit of the added blood for effect. Uh, very good. Um, I don't think Riddle lost this because of that silly pre-tape thing where he forgot the lines with Asuka. Supposedly it was a pre-tape thing anyway, and they just thought it was funny and left it. Um, but I, I, it might be more of a reward for Sheamus than, than a punishment for Riddle. I don't, you know, losing everything, losing isn't a punishment. It's, uh, Riddle can go after something or someone else. Nah, who knows? Who knows? I don't know the answer. But not sure what to do with Sheamus in the U.S. title, unless they just rematch it to death and Riddle beats him back. I don't know. But both the U.S. and Intercontinental Championship matches are on this show, and they're back-to-back, -back, which is odd. You'd think that those would be two. You'd definitely separate. And the Nigerian drum fight. Oh, dear. Wale plays Big E to the ring. Made it feel big for Big E, which is good. Uh... Really don't want to complain about finishes because you know every your favorites can't win all the time. I'm only okay with Big E. Big E did lose this. I'm only okay with Big E losing this if it's on to better, bigger, better things. Uh, so they have it's basically a no holds barred match with a bunch of weapons outside, a bunch of drums and a gong. And my friend Brian Yang texted me to let me know that gongs are Asian or what the hell. Um, and uh, they just say, he theorized they just found whatever shit they could that day of. And that's probably true. I would imagine that they uh, also had ideas such as uh, not just gongs and, and drums, but uh, camels, burritos, uh, maple syrup, oil, spaghetti, just anything they could think of from various nations. And uh, igloos, just anything, just just whatever. Just say it's Nigeria. No one's going to know. They're all going to know. Weird thing about the Nigerian drum fight is that the loser of this match had to Venmo the winner $800. It was, that's not true, Bob. Why don't you stop that? Why don't you stop that right now? So this big dude who used to be Yabba Dabba Do, part of the Shane McMahon's failed underground thing, so Shane can jerk himself off, which is a reoccurring theme of WWE in the last several years. Uh, Jizz McMahon, <laughs> Jizz and the Miz. I'm using that mark. Jizz versus Miz was a few years ago where they took that big bump and, and Shane still pinned him. And Shane was the heel and Miz never got his win back over Jizz. So Jizz McMahon's old guy, Yabba Dabba Do, is uh, now a Nigerian soldier. I'm not kidding. And choke slams Big E, which you can't do to a 300-pound man who's moving. I don't care who you... Anyway, I guess that's not the biggest problem thing. And there's no rules. And again, it's... I hate to repeat my favorite podcast of all time, but lazy booking. <laughs> There's no rules, so the big the big new heavy just runs in and does a move in front of the ref, and the referee has his thumb up his butt. And one, two, three. So we have a new IC champ. It's Apollo. Here's the thing with Apollo and Yabba Dabba Doo versus AJ and Omos. Apollo is a huge guy. He doesn't look like he needs any help. AJ, while being a... Absolutely an amazing athlete and probably one of the best wrestlers in the world. Um, is not a big guy for in wrestling standards. I'm sure in real life he's probably, for, for average human beings, he's probably a very big fit, you know, a great in, in great shape guy, obviously. But Omos protecting AJ as a bodyguard, you know, a heater kind of guy makes perfect sense. So AJ can hide behind him and be cocky, and as good as AJ is, he just doesn't want to get his hands dirty. But Apollo is enormous. Apollo could be somebody else's sidekick giant guy. Jesus, he's that big. So why does Apollo need protection? It's the old thing. Why does Goldberg need eight security guards to protect? We never know. We never got an answer for that. We, they just thought it looked cool, I guess. So okay, I think we have two matches left. I think so. Rhea Ripley defeats Asuka. This wasn't, uh... Mm, this did not live up, I'm sorry, to what we thought it was going to. 
Bianca and Sasha clearly get the. Uh, I mean, they had the moment of being last and everything, and but I think they had a better match. This match to me got screwed up last Monday when they had Rhea like, turn turn on Oscar and beat her up from attack her from behind or beat her up or turn on her during their tag, their tag match where they're obviously not going to get along and Team Nia can win forever. So to me, that's when the match was already screwed up because people don't know what to do because now. Asuka's fighting for underneath, and those people, they love Asuka, but they want to see Rhea win the thing. So what they, the only way to me this would have worked is if Asuka temporarily assumed the heel role, kicked the shit out of Rhea, and Rhea fought back and won the thing, and, they, and they'll still love Asuka. As long as Asuka doesn't cheat. She can be brutal and beat the shit out of her, but just don't cheat to keep Asuka in good favor. But no, they had to because they weren't cheering for Oscar to win. They, they this shows how out of touch they are with the fans. What the fans want, I know they haven't had they haven't had the luxury of getting our live feedback for thirteen months. But have they? Yeah, Twitter is not the world, but you could use it. I mean, there's a gauge. There's certainly a gauge. So there's something there. The people will tell you because while I don't think Twitter is the world and Twitter is everything. A lot of people who attend WrestleMania Live tend to be pretty diehard fans. So there is, I think there's more of a crossover on WrestleMania weekend than any other time of the year. So that's my feeling on that. Uh, Rhea wins the thing out of nowhere. Asuka's just kicking her around and then she falls into the pump handle slam thing that, that Rhea does at 1, 2, 3. And that was really odd. Great moment for Rhea and everything. Um... I think Rhea Charlotte with no people is better than Rhea Oscar with people. Uh, this that's my opinion there, because there was a reason to get behind Rhea or get behind someone and not behind the other one, and uh, kind of a letdown. Where the people and usually the excuse for these manias is well the people were tired. Well they were they were t they weren't tired from tonight. They were tired from the night before and tonight. So. Yes, they were tired, I guess, probably, but but they're still pretty excited, and they were very excited for the triple threat, which we'll get to now. The main event, uh, and again, Rhea was, Rhea's having her moment, but she came into this as a heel, so this is all heel victories. Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, Edge, and again, no one gets a special entrance, only, in two nights, only Bad Bunny gets a special entrance. This is why your superstars look like chumps. While, yeah, I'm of the mentality, a one-on-one -on -one for this would have been better, Roman and Edge. And I love Daniel Bryan, but I think Roman and Edge just would have been an easier back and forth to follow. And it was hard to get behind. It's kind of like every U.S. election. whoever, Whichever side, Democrat or Republican, loses the election, they always blame the independent people running. Well, they're the ones who took our votes away, those independent ones. Everyone always does that, no matter who loses. It's it's, it's very comical. We suck. Uh it's, it's kind of, the fans were like, well, we love Brian, we love Edge. And I know people were saying, Edge is a heel going into this. Nah, I don't buy it. Um, Edge is still a very sentimental favorite. Him and Brian have very similar stories about they're supposed to be retired and they shouldn't, and now here they are. And Edge wins the Rumble and Daniel Bryan, well, he taps out Roman and they all got their cases. Roman's the tribal chief. He's been unstoppable. He's beaten everyone. No one has touched him since he won the thing. He hasn't lost since his comeback, really, in the summer. It was SummerSlam. He came back, and what the hell did he do? I think he did something to Braun that Fiend can beat him, and then uh, like a week later, something happened. I forget. Then it was a three-way, and Roman won the thing. Somehow. Okay, whatever. Yeah, so Roman hasn't lost, of course, and we're wondering is res this would be the only time Roman could lose the thing. And uh, having both Brian and Edge in the match, to me, further telegraphed Roman is definitely winning. If it was one on one, either way, I'd be like, okay, well, maybe you know, especially Edge. I don't think they, I think uh, you know they would want to finish that story because there's so much time in the last year invested, and he got. Edge, much like Drew, was one of the people who got kind of shit on. Um, Edge had an amazing reaction by uh, amazing reaction to his entrance. They were really still thrilled about Edge uh, seeing him wrestle live. 
because most of those fans thought they never would, or maybe some of their first shows they saw him once and thought they never would again. So, um, and these three were great, beat the hell out of each other. I thought it could have gone a little longer, but that's a nitpick. Um, as far as three ways go, you couldn't pick any better guys in the company to do this with, so it was as good as it possibly could be. Told a good story, Jey Uso's involvement in it was great. Um, you know, he was kicking uh, Edge, kicking Brian. He was doing all this interference and making things easy for Roman. And Edge had to sacrifice himself by giving a, a DDT on the steps to Jay and hurt himself. Just They both knew they had to take out Jay. And Jay had to come back later and make the save. And um, eventually, Roman does the concerto thing to both the guys and drops on top of one or the, one or the other. Um, and I think... One of their butts was on the other guy's face. I forget which was which, but um, you know, some people made the point that maybe Edge technically won because Edge was on top of Brian, but Edge's shoulders are also down. So if all four shoulders are down, then Roman is the winner. I don't. So I'm not disputing that. It's not like uh, the Mania two years ago where Ronda really could have kept those shoulders down. <laughs> We've seen worse than the main event of Mania. Uh, so Edge wins the thing, um, which I'm fine with. I uh, just would have thought some other baby faces could have won, like Jesus Christ. We couldn't see Fiend win. We couldn't see Big E win. Three and four I still would have been okay with. But then again, Fiend going in was a heel, so I'm kind of contradicting myself there. Fiend just becomes a baby by default because he's he's been turned on, so he's sympathetic. He was burned alive. and So unless... So Alexa's got some promos, I hope, coming up for us to knock it out of the park, I hope, and explain, hey, you robbed me of my identity, you uh, you did this and that, and um, you you were or you were weak and you weren't 100% committed to the evil cause, you're the one who dragged me into this, and then you disappeared. Um, but unless they can't do Fiend versus Alexa, so what the hell is the thing, what's going on here? I don't know. Um... But I have as much, I, I think I've had more feel-good moments in night one. This mania, more so than others, I think it's a it's a make them happy show. Everyone should have walked away. And Roman can still win at the end, but you can mostly make people happy throughout the thing. And this was just like, this was an F you to fans. Like this night, just the finishes were like, nope, make you sad. Nope, make you sad. Let's be sad. We don't want to be sad. We, we were just sad for a year and change, and we're still sad. Like, we're we're trying to get over the sad now. People are getting vaccinated. They're starting to meet up again here and there. And there's no jobs, so, we, you know, we, so there's still going to be people miserable. But um, we didn't need all this sadness. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm going to have to do Raw and NXT this week, and then hopefully uh, another old pay-per-view in the near future for you guys. Uh, but there's not that much to choose from on the on the peacock or the cock as the kids are calling it on the the network here. The only the the only old stuff they have is the old SummerSlam manias and Rumbles, and those so that's a very limited scope of pay per views to go through. Not no Saturday night main event, no none of that awesome stuff that I really would have preferred to watch for you guys. It'd been like, dude, you got to check out this Saturday night's main event. You probably forgot about from like. October of 90 or November of 89 or something or May or April of 88 or, you know, something like that. And the shame, and it's a shame because I can't. So um, I started watching the most recent UK. I'm in the middle of Tyler Bate versus Noam Dar, the heritage thing. So uh, I want to catch up on everything that I'm missing with, with Kaylee Ray mostly is really what I want to catch up on. So I thank you for joining me. Bob Squad for WrestleMania Night 2. I guess my main takeaway is uh, it wasn't bad. It could have been happier. It was just... And you got Drew losing and Vince McMahon stealing the pop. I think, the, why does that get in my crawl more than anything else about the whole weekend? Um, Alexa just turned with the Fiend. It was fun again. And then Alexa just, you know... Because the Fiend was wrestling a match and being the monster, but doing it in a wrestling form. And some people hate the red light. Some people like them. I don't know. But I didn't think that was going to be the thing that I would focus on for this show. I really uh, I thought Rhea and Asuka would be more of a, oh, my God, did you see that? But it just it was just weird. And 
confusing and some folks are out of touch, but they are out of touch and I'm out of my time and I'm out of time and I'm out of my head when they're not around, as Hall Oates would say. It's the hardest part of the ring. I will join you again very, very shortly. Then, now, forever.